Hello friends, welcome to CS Cube. Turing machine can be used to calculate any function. Today in this video, we are going to learn that how can we design a Turing machine that computes the function fm equal to m plus 1. This function means that m is the input of the function and it is providing the output as m plus 1. That means 1 is added to the input in order to obtain the output where m belongs to the set of natural number. So we need to design a Turing machine that can compute this particular function. Now as we have already discussed in our previous videos that Turing machine is formed using six tuples. So the six tuples are capital Q, summation, gamma, delta, Q not H. Capital Q is a set of states. Summation is the input that is provided from the infinite tape except from the blank symbol hash. Gamma is the combination of the symbols on the infinite tape as well as the blank symbol hash. Delta is the transition function that can be represented in three forms. It can be represented using a transition graph or diagram. It can be represented using a transition function or it can be represented using a transition table. In this particular question, we are going to represent delta in the form of a function. Q0 is the initial state and H is the halt state. Halt state is that particular state where the Turing machine halts. In order to understand these tuples in more details, you can go back and watch our video on introduction to Turing machine. Now let us start the implementation of the function fm equal to m plus 1 on the number of symbols i. So we are considering that we are providing the number of i to as the input to this function fm. Suppose for example let's say m is equal to 2 that means we are providing as an input 2 i to our function. So our input will be hash i i hash. Now as I have already told you many a times that for a Turing machine the symbols in the infinite tape are represented with the hash in the beginning and hash at the ending. So these two non uh, these two blank symbols represents the starting and the ending of the string. Now when we are providing the input as m equal to 2 then the output becomes m plus 1 that means it should give us 3 i as 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So in output we must obtain 3 i. So this is the required output. Similarly if we are providing m equal to 5 that means in the input we are providing 5 i. Okay, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 i are provided as the input. So in the output, it will produce 6 i as the output because this function generates 1 more than the number of inputs provided. So from the example, it is clear that we need to generate a Turing machine in which if we are providing the input as 2i, then the output must be 3i. If we are providing the input as 5i, the output should be 6i. If we are providing input as 3i, then the output should be 4i. If 6i are provided, then output should be 7i. Now, considering that our read right head is scanning the right most non-blank symbol first. So we are considering that in our input, the read right head is pointing to the rightmost non-blank symbol. Now if we see the example carefully, then we will observe that what is required to be done. So over here, if we want to have an extra i, we need to replace this particular hash by a i. And then after this i, we will include a hash again. That means the hash at the end of the input has to be replaced by a i. 
in order to obtain one i more than the number of i is provided as the input. So now as we know our read write ahead is on i. So we are not going to move in the left direction because in the left direction we already know that there are all the i's are present in the left direction. What is required? We need to move to the right direction and need to replace this particular hash by a i. Now in order to replace this hash by a i, we need to do something with this i also because currently our read write head is on this particular i. So what we are going to do, we will replace the i by i itself because we don't want to remove this particular i. So the i will be replaced by i and then we will move our read write head to the right direction and then we will replace this hash by a i. So we will obtain 6 i's when the input was given as 5 i. Now for this we need to write the transition function. So as I have already told you that in order to represent delta I am using the function. Now considering that we are on the state q0 and the input provided to the state is i. So we are on this particular i and the state is q0. Now as we need to change the symbol i by i itself because we don't want to remove this i. So we are replacing i by i and moving our head to the right. Now we don't want to make a loop over here. This step has to be done only once. That's why we are moving from state Q0 to state Q1. If in case we want to have a loop, that means there are many i's and we want to replace each and every i. In that case, we will be on the same state from Q0, we will remain on the Q0. But in this case, we are having a single i and we want to replace it by a i only. That's why we are changing the state from state q0 to state q1 and replacing the i by i itself and moving to the right direction. Now, when we have moved to the right direction, the symbol obtained is hash and the state is q1. So we have moved from state q0 to state q1. So initially we were on the state q0 and we have moved to state q1 and the symbol which we are reading is hash. So delta we are on the state q1 we are reading a symbol hash. Now when we are reading a hash we want to replace this particular hash by a i in order to obtain one extra i. So we are replacing the hash by i. Now we can move to the right direction. So again we are moving to the right direction and since there is nothing on the right of the hash so we will consider one more blank symbol that is a hash is considered again. So we are replacing the hash by a i and moving to the right direction. Now since our output is complete as for the 5 i we have 6 i's as the output. So we can say that we have reached to our final state and in case of the Turing machine, the final state over here is a halt state. So we are transiting to the halt state. That means we are moving from state Q1 to halt state H and the symbol hash is replaced by the symbol I and we will move to the right direction. Now we have moved to the right direction and we have come to this particular hash. And the state is state over here is H. So we are on the state H and we are reading the symbol hash. That means the string is accepted and our question is complete. So for 5i, we have provided the output as 6i by replacing the hash by a single i. So in this way, we can compute any of the functions using a Turing machine. Now as I have already told you that Turing machine is represented using 6 tuples. So this was only one tuple. Now we need to identify the other 5 tuples. 
So in this we can see that how many states are there. There are three states Q0, Q1 and H. That's why we are providing Q equal to Q0, Q1 and H. That means cap, uh, capital Q the set of states is equal to Q0, Q1, H. Then summation is the symbols on the infinite shape except from the blank symbol hash. So the symbols on the infinite shape is only i or hash. So summation is equal to i because we cannot consider hash over here. Now gamma is the combination of the symbols on the infinite shape as well as the blank symbol hash. So the symbols on the infinite shape are i comma hash represents the blank symbol. Initial state q0 over here is q0 itself and halt state h over here is also the halt state h. So we are writing it q0 is equal to q0 and h is equal to h. So this is all about this particular question that how can we design a Turing machine for a function that can compute f m equal to m plus 1. Now let's take any of the example so that you are more clear. For example, let's say we are having 2i as the input. So the input will be having the hash in the beginning and hash at the ending. Currently our read write head is on this particular i and we are on the state q0. Now q0 and i we are reading i so i will be replaced by i and our read write head will move to the right direction that means it will come to the hash and straight will change to q1 because we don't want to loop it we only want to do it only once that's why we are changing the state from q0 to q1 now we are on the state q1 and the hash is replaced by i that means we are replacing this particular hash by i so we are having three i's as the output now since the output is obtained we are going to move to the right direction and the state will be the halt state that is our final state. Now since there is no symbol over here so we can consider that there is a blank symbol because blank symbol is nothing. So we can consider a blank symbol whenever there is nothing present in a string. So if we are on the halt state and we have obtained a blank symbol that means our string is accepted and this is the final Turing machine that is obtained. So our output becomes i, i and i. That means for 2i as the input we are having 3i as the output. So that's all about this particular video. Thanks for watching our video. In case of any queries please leave a comment in the comment section below. Stay tuned for further videos. Please like and subscribe our channel CSQ. Thank you.